Hello, I'm JW. And continuing in the series on metal conduit, this time we're going to have a look at actually cutting it and also threading it. Of course, it's necessary if you want to connect it to other items. Now, let's have a look at the tools that would be required. Now, when you buy conduit, of course, it comes with a very long section, so the first thing is going to be to actually cut it down to size. Now, the old method, of course, would be to use something like this hacksaw here, and there's nothing wrong with that, it can still be used, of course. You want a fairly uh, fine pitch blade, and obviously it needs to be designed for metal, which is uh, obviously not a problem. So you can see is that not a problem, but of course it is uh, a fairly slow and uh, tiresome method to use. Now of course you can get powered saws, sort of electric ones, with a similar style of blade in them, and again you can use that if you want to. A uh, more likely option you can use is one of these, which is basically an angle grinder with a very thin slitting blade or slitting disc installed. This particular one is only one millimetre thick, and if you're going to use these, get a disc that is literally as thin as you can possibly get, because of course the thicker it is, the uh, more mess it's going to make when you cut. So thinner, generally much easier. I only see that one there, so it's just one millimetre thick. So again, perfectly fine option there, and of course that's a lot quicker than using the uh, more traditional hacksaw. Now once you've cut the actual stuff, you need to put a thread on the end, and for that you'll need a threading set. Here's a fairly typical example. Now, uh, these are available in a variety of sizes, but uh, as we saw in the last episode, the most common sizes are 20 and 25 millimetres, and typically a set this will have both sizes in. If you want to do 16 or the larger 32 and so on, then of course you will need to buy a separate set for those. But uh, these are fairly straightforward, and so this has the 20 and the 25 in it as well. So we've got various parts here. This is the guide, which, uh, as it names, just guides the conduit, make sure it's straight. We have the actual cutting die here. Central uh, part of that, and then the two handles, which in this case are separate so it can fit in a small case. And in terms of assembling these, the handles simply screw into the ends like that. And of course the other handle is exactly the same. The only major difference between these and the ones for larger ones is that the larger the conduit is, the more force it takes to cut it. So you'll find the ones, say, the 32 and the 40 have much longer handles. And then in the centre here we have these two pieces here, which will be unscrewed. And then the assembly for this is that the guide goes in first, and that just drops in to the centre like that. And then when you're actually cutting, that's where the conduit would be placed inside. And then the cutting die of the appropriate size just drops in the top here. And it's got these two little uh, recessed pieces here, so that when you screw these in, they just go into that recess and stop this actually rotating. And note it's just a mechanical thing there. It doesn't have to be sort of tightened down hugely, because all you're doing is just stopping that moving. You're not actually sort of clamping down on the thing. It's just uh, going into that side piece like that. So that is now ready for threading. And so that's the 21, but of course the 25 is exactly the same, just to change out the cutting die and of course the guide for the other size. Now just a word of warning on these things, if you haven't used such things before, when you pick these up, do not pick it up from the middle, so don't put your finger there and then try and pick it up, because the inside of these is extremely sharp, and there's lots of the sharp bits in there, so put your finger in there, then inevitably you're going to be having some kind of injury. So pick it up from the outside, although it's tempting of course to put your finger in there, do not do that. Now once you've cut and uh, threaded the end of the conduit, there's inevitably going to be some kind of a burr left on the inside of the conduit. Which of course you don't want because that could of course snag on the wiring and cause it to be damaged, so you need some kind of deburring tool. Here's the one that uh, I've got, this is a uh, Noga deburring tool, and has this sort of curved blade here. In terms of using these, it's just place it into the end of the conduit there, and then you just rotate around and that will just take off any burrs you've got on the inside. You can get other stars, which is sort of like a cone-shaped thing, which you just sort of twist in the end like that. Again, it doesn't really matter which one you've got, as long as you've got one. It doesn't matter on the outside, of course, because we're going to thread that and any burrs, they'll be uh, taken off anyhow, but the inside does definitely need to be deburred, so it will obviously damage the wiring if you didn't. And the final thing to do with threading is that when you're actually cutting the thread, you do need some kind of lubricant to put onto the conduit first. In theory you can cut without it, 
But the problem with that is it's going to make it far more difficult, and if you don't use any lubricant, the actual cutting die won't actually last very long and will wear out fairly quickly. Now, traditionally, uh, the lubricant was tallow, which is basically made from rendered down beef fat, a fairly disgusting product. Fortunately, these days you can buy uh, specific actual cutting compounds. Here's one particular example, and of course, others are available. And uh, so, a lube tin like this will probably last for years because they only use a very small amount each time. Now, in terms of the actual uh, cutting die, the deal with these is that uh, the die itself will eventually wear out and obviously not be any use. But the point then is you just buy the actual cutting die itself. You don't have to buy the actual handles and guides and whatever else as a replacement item because they pretty much last for years. Now, if you're going to buy any of these sort of second hand or whatever, bear in mind that uh, you're going to basically have to accommodate for that plus the cost of a new cutting die because if it's been a used one, well, it might be in okay condition, but the chances are it's going to be worn out. So if you are going to buy a second hand one of these or use one from somewhere, Factor in the fact that you're going to have to purchase a replacement set of dies as well. And again, that may not make it particularly economical because these aren't exactly a huge fortune to buy brand new either. Now, aside from those things, the other thing you're going to need is a vise to actually hold the conduit while you're cutting it, and more importantly, while threading it, because of course you can't uh, thread it unless the conduit is securely attached in place. Now, if you don't have a conduit bending machine, you can of course just use a normal bench vise or whatever to hold it. But of course, if you have a conduit bender, which inevitably you really should have, if you're going to be fitting it, then they do have a vise as part of that. And of course, that's uh, what you would normally use. Now, here we have a typical example of a vise. This is mounted on the actual bender, which we'll look at in a later time. This is a Hillmore PV1 vise, and it's pretty much the standard one that uh, most of these conduit benders actually have. And although Hillmore was a manufacturer of these benders, uh, there were several other manufacturers. Basically, they're all made to the same pattern, all based the same design, and therefore, this is pretty much uh, what you will get. And uh, this is specifically designed for conduit, and as well as the actual uh, turning part here for the jaws, it has this quick release on the side, so rather than unscrewing it for miles, you can simply just open it up like that. And then the conduit, of course, just uh, fits inside, therefore making it uh, much quicker to actually secure that in position. So it's basically only sort of half a turn. Or you can actually remove the stuff. Now another thing about these vices is that the jaws here, of which there's two at the bottom, and then this V-shaped one on the top, these are actually replaceable components, so when they get worn out you can simply buy a new set and then just uh, bolt them into position. And uh, this is pretty much the same for most of the other stuff on this bending machine. Most of the parts uh, are a replaceable item. So in terms of actually uh, doing the threading, it will be a simple question of uh, installing the conduit into the vise, making sure that's uh, securely clamped in position, and then we're actually ready to cut the thread. Now in terms of the actual uh, threading, once it's in the vise there, we need to take some of the cutting lubricant and just apply some of that to the end of the conduit there. It doesn't need a huge amount, but uh, just a thin coating. Now in terms of the actual cutting part, the uh, guide here of course fits over the conduit thusly like that. And then you would rotate this in a clockwise direction, which will then cut the thread onto the actual conduit. And when you actually start this, you need to actually apply a decent amount of force against these handles, so it pushes it onto the end, and that can get the actual cutting tool started. Now I'm doing this from the wrong side, because then you can obviously see, but normally you'd be standing that way around, so of course it would be somewhat easier. So when you're actually starting the thing, the question of just rotating the handles, applying a bit of pressure against the conduit, and then you'll be able to feel pretty much when it's actually starting to bite in, which that now is. And then once it's actually starting to bite in, it's just a question of rotating. You don't have to actually push in because the cutting tool will make its own thread, of course. And therefore we don't actually need any additional pressure. Now, as you actually make the cut, when you get to a certain point, it's got to go just to ease back one. We'll actually break off the chip inside, or basically the bit of metal you're removing. And then just continue uh, turning again. And then just break that chip there. And again, just keep turning. Every so often, just break that off, and you'll be able to see the bits of metal just sort of falling out at the end there, which is basically the metal that you're cutting off from the outside of the conduit to form the thread. So, best question of keeping uh, the same motion going. And I say, I'm doing this on the wrong side, so. It's obviously uh, a bit more difficult than normal. 
Now on this particular set, and in fact most others, normally the thread length you want is when the thread protrudes from the end here and actually lines up with the first line on this uh, knurled piece here. So we're just coming up to that point now. So we'll just go up to that, which is approximately there. And then once you get to the end, you find that the tool just needs to be unravelled from there and it will come off fairly easily. Which will just remove any of the bits from the thread. Simply remove the actual cutting tool. And then there we have the thread that we have just cut, so I can then just remove it from the vise. And then there's that thread which we've just cut onto the end there. Now once you've cut the thread you need to just uh, remove any burrs from the end there. And that's pretty much it, that is now a nice smooth edge on the inside. And then this is ready to thread into whatever it is you're going to connect it to. So for example this uh, box here, and then you should find that it uh, easily just threads on no problem whatsoever. And if it doesn't then you've obviously made some horrible mistake by using the wrong die or whatever else. So uh, that's uh, pretty much the deal for threading. Now in terms of the length of thread that you want to actually cut, this really depends on what you're going to attach it into. Now in the case there we just cut it up to the actual mark on the threading tool, so when the conduit was coming out here we just basically cut until the end of the conduit came up flush with this first line. So that's pretty much the sort of normal length of most ordinary boxes, but in some cases you might want a longer or a shorter thread. The whole idea is that if you have an item like this, which of course has the thread in, the length of thread you want to cut should be basically the length of that particular item, so that when you screw the thing in here, you can of course use the entire length of the thread, so that goes all the way in. And then when you look on the outside, you've of course used all the thread up so there's no extra pieces sticking out here. And then on the inside, the actual conduit comes all the way up to the edge of the box here. What you don't want is to see a load of exposed thread in there, so if you cut this thread too short, you could have had this kind of effect where you've got the conduit in there but then there's this extra thread showing, because when you pull the wiring through later, that's going to have a sharp edge and that could cause the wires to be damaged. And likewise you don't want the thread to be too long, because if you did, if you screwed it all the way into the end stop, you would have a bit of thread showing on the outside like this. That also looks untidy, and as we saw in the previous video, if you leave this cut thread exposed, then it can actually go rusty, which of course is uh, definitely not what you want. So cutting it to the correct length, so you should have pretty much no thread showing, and again, no thread showing on the inside either, so you've got a decent smooth area, so no snags on the cables. Now when it comes to actually measuring the conduit, there's a couple of things you need to bear in mind. When you're going to cut the conduit, obviously you want it to fit between two, say, boxes like this or various other items. So of course you're going to measure the distance between the boxes that you would want. So in this particular case, we've got that as being, say, 30 centimetres between the actual two boxes. But of course you don't want to cut the conduit to be 30 centimetres, because if you did, it would fit perfectly between there, and of course there's no room for threading. So if you want a piece between here 30 centimetres length, that's fine, but then you need to add on the thread distance here and the thread distance here. So in this case you would actually cut that to around 33 centimetres or 330 millimetres. That would give you 15 millimetres at each end for the actual threaded parts. Now as another example, if you're going to fit it between say one of these styles of boxes, and again you want to say 30 centimetres from here to the box you've already got on the wall. Typically you're going to use one of these couplers and that will just go on the side here with one of those brass bushes inside. So in this case if you want 30 centimetres from say the box edge to the edge of this one, the distance you want is 30 centimetres but you're going to have to add on the 15 millimetres here for the threading part. But on this end you're going to have to allow for the 50 millimetres here but you're actually going to have to deduct, because remember that the conduit will only go halfway into the coupler, the brass bush will do the other side, and as you see that's around 30 millimetres in length. So in this case the measurement would actually be from 50 millimetres in to another 50 millimetres at that end, so in this case it is actually 30 centimetres that you're going to be cutting, as it's going to be a piece going in there, but again it's going to be offset from the box by the same amount here. So it's up there at uh, cutting and threading conduit. 
And certainly when cutting, do remember to include the actual length of thread at the end, and also deduct any offset if you're going to be say, using a coupler against a box or whatever, because just cutting it to length between them of course is no good because obviously there's no room left to actually thread the thing in. And you can actually buy electric uh, threading machines if you are going to be doing a lot of threading. They're not actually any quicker than using the hand tool, but of course they're far less effort because you're just going to be threading the uh, thing with a motor, and obviously you don't have to actually turn anything, you're just pressing a switch. So if you're going to be doing longer threading, then it might be worth getting one of those. They are fairly expensive machines, hundreds of pounds each, but uh, again, something to consider and be aware of that's actually available. Now next time we'll have a look at bending, but uh, until then, thanks for watching.